It's Ash from Super Videos back for another video for season 8 of The Walking Dead. This is going to be my review for episode 6 and also the promo breakdown for the next episode, episode 7. So for those of you that are new here, this is a new way I'm doing the episode reviews and promo breakdowns. I'm going to be doing the review of the episode that just aired first and then I'm going to be jumping into the promo breakdown. So let's start with the review of the episode that just aired episode six which was called the king the widow and rick so overall i thought this episode was okay a bit slow paced i would say this was my least favorite episode this season mainly because i felt like in terms of content in terms of material it was dry there wasn't too much there there was a few things that i enjoyed but overall i felt like it was dry in terms of you know, how much it moved the story forward and how much material there was in the episode. So I'm just going to jump into each kind of section of the episode and talking about it. So first we have that opener where I actually enjoyed because it basically gives a snapshot of the status of the war through kind of letters. So we have them kind of transferring letters to each other from one section of the community or one section of the group where they're basically attacking to the other section and they're basically explaining what has happened in the war so far and how successful they've been. So I kind of enjoyed that. I thought it was dragged a little bit too much, but I liked the concept of it. Then jumping into the actual interaction between Rick and Jadis with the scavengers. First of all, before Rick even gets there, we see Jadis and someone else and they're naked. Why the hell are they naked? That just didn't make any sense. That was extremely odd, extremely weird, and it was just one of those WTF moments. I'm like, what is going on? But other than that, you know, the whole interaction between Jadis and Rick and Rick trying to make a deal, as I've said before, it's a bit of miscalculation on Rick's part, and I know he said that people know I'm here, my people know I'm here, and that's absolutely fine, but there needs to be some backup. They could have just killed Rick right then and there. So a bit of miscalculation on Rick's part, and I knew that the scavengers are not going to want to make this deal, even before I knew that Rick was going to get captured, which he was. But, you know, I just think this whole plan was a dumb plan in terms of what Rick was thinking. But we have the little interaction. I liked Rick's speech to Jadis, but I just hated the concept and the plan that he had. But he ends up getting captured and everything, which we were right on as a community of, you know, YouTubers who predict what's going to happen. So we were absolutely right about that. He did get captured and that was kind of revealed at the end of the episode. But in terms of the scavengers, that's basically everything that I wanted to share. Then jumping into Alexandria, we have that little scene between... Daryl and Tara, which I thought was pretty cool, pretty interesting. The way they were talking about how they both want to kill Dwight. And Daryl says, it could be me and you both. At first, in the promo, when they had that little part, maybe it could be me and you both. I didn't know it was about Dwight. So I thought maybe they were talking about attacking the sanctuary or something. Which I was kind of right about, but, you know, it's even better that they were talking about killing Dwight. I thought it added more dimension to that whole thing between Daryl... Tara and Dwight and it kind of connected back to the previous season when we had Dwight being captured and everything or being put in the jail cell and Daryl wanting to kill him so that was pretty cool pretty interesting then the other part was with Michonne and Rosita they wanted to basically go to the sanctuary and see for themselves that the sanctuary is in fact surrounded so that was cool and everything i thought it was dragged a little bit too much obviously they had that close call and everything but i felt like it was pushed a little bit too much but one scene that i absolutely love actually two but one i enjoyed more than the other the first one is when rosita blows that one guy with the rpg i absolutely loved it the cgi was a bit iffy because he just kind of disappeared at least that's what I saw, but, you know, I like the concept. I like the idea that Rosita just blew the guy up. That was pretty cool. Then the other part was when Daryl and Tara show up out of nowhere and save the day. That was pretty cool. It was dragged a little bit too much with the mission that they had for Michonne and Rosita, but I liked where they were going with that. Then going from there, going to the kingdom, I felt like this was unnecessary. They could have either trimmed it or 
left it for another episode. I felt like the content from the kingdom in this episode were kind of useless or not useless, but they didn't really fit this episode. Uh, one thing I want to mention before I jump into the hilltop, one thing I forgot about Alexandria, we have Carl going to Sadiq and, you know, saving him and helping him. And they had that little close call as well. I thought that was pretty cool. Again, it was dragged a little bit too much, but it was cool. And Another thing that we were right on as a community, that was in fact Sadiq, and this was revealed, so that was pretty cool. But then jumping into the hilltop, I kind of like what they were doing at the hilltop with the prisoners and everything. I wanted them to build on that a little bit more. It felt a little dry, but overall, I did like it. Two things I absolutely loved. One, when Jared was just about to grab one of the guns and most likely take one of them hostage, we have Maggie acting quickly and putting him down. That was pretty cool. Epic. Absolutely loved it. And then the other part where she actually puts Gregory with the other prisoners. I loved that. I thought that was pretty cool. But, you know, we begin to see more and more that they're trying to make us understand that there's two separate groups of saviors. One group that is absolutely an asshole and wants to fight and you know, they're just like Negan and they want to kill everybody just like Jared. And there's another group of saviors that they just want to survive. They're just doing what they have to do to survive. They're repeating this to us over and over again. And I'm pretty sure that at some point it's going to come back into play and it's going to play a major part and role in where the story goes next. But that's basically it for my review. But like I said... It was one of those episodes that it was okay, but I didn't really enjoy it that much. It was my least favorite episode this season. So that being said, we're going to jump right into the promo breakdown for the next episode. The next episode is going to be called Time for After. And it seems like it's another one of those episodes where we see a lot of the sanctuary as well. So that's going to be interesting. One thing I do want to mention before I jump into the promo breakdown, the last episode, episode six, even though it was split between all of these different communities and stuff, it could still be looked at as a bottle episode, at least to me. It felt like a bottle episode, even though we saw pretty much a lot of the communities that we know of, except the Sanctuary. So let's jump into the promo breakdown. On the next episode of AMC's The Walking Dead. So here we have Eugene and Lara looking outside at the walkers, at the walker silhouettes and everything. So they're basically at the sanctuary and the sanctuary is surrounded. It is gonna fall. We have a dialogue with Dwight saying this place is going to fall and we will basically get to see who he is talking to in a bit. But we have this pretty cool shot of Negan as well. I don't know who he is sitting in front of, but it's a pretty cool shot of Negan. So we see Dwight is actually talking to Eugene. He says, this place is going to fall. And if you want to be on the winning team, you have to do nothing. So it seems like Eugene has told Dwight that he knows that he is the rat of the group and everything. He looks pretty angry at Dwight here. So it seems like Dwight is trying to put some sense into Eugene and make him understand that if he wants to be on the winning team, he has to shut his mouth and not say anything and not reveal that Dwight is the rat. So I think it's going to be interesting to see what Eugene does next because, you know, there's this part of him that wants to be safe and wants to stick with the winning side. And at this point, I would say that he knows the winning side is Rick's group, but there's another part of him that fears what's going to happen if he's wrong and he ends up being on the wrong team again. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. But I love the dynamic that they're building between Eugene and Dwight. We have this shot of one of the scavengers taking Daryl outside. Now, it's interesting that they stripped him of his clothes. We saw that in the last episode as well. But it's interesting. I don't know why they would do that. But it's very interesting. And also, it seems like Jadis is wearing Rick's clothes. I might be wrong about that. But I felt like that's what they were hinting at when they showed the jean Jadis was wearing. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Rick and whether anyone's going to come to his rescue. So we have them carrying Rick and we hear a walker in the background. So I wonder if they're going to put him through another test and make him fight another Winslow-like walker. It's going to be interesting to see if that actually happens. This time he actually has none of his clothes. He has 
no weapons, he has nothing. And there is nobody cheering him on. Last time, Michonne was cheering him on. This time, there's no one. So it's going to be interesting to see whether he's going to be put through another test. And if he is, how he's going to make it out of it. We have this shot of Dwight giving this look to Eugene, which is interesting. And then here we have Negan in the back, Dwight there, and Eugene is kind of walking away. Now, it seems like maybe they had a little conversation. It's going to be interesting to see whether Eugene said anything to Negan about Dwight or anything like that. It definitely seems like it's going to be an intense scene and maybe Dwight at this time is wondering whether Eugene is going to say anything or not. And I'm pretty sure that Eugene is going to basically walk away and not say anything. And that's going to basically put Dwight at ease. Do this. Crack it open. We have Tara saying, we can do this, crack it open. I'm not sure what she's talking about. Maybe they're trying to get inside the sanctuary or open one of the doors at the sanctuary and let the walkers get in. Because obviously Daryl was saying that back in the other episode to Rick, that they can just do that. Let all the walkers in and basically let the sanctuary get surrounded from the inside as well. But it's going to be interesting to see what they do and whether they're actually trying to get into the sanctuary. We know they have a mission and that's why they're there. Rosita, Michonne, Tara and Daryl. We don't know what their mission is. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. We have this shot of Morgan. It seems like Morgan is finally back. I'm not sure what he's doing, but one thing that I did notice, which is interesting, is that this is like a throwback to the first episode. In the first episode, we have a shot exactly like this with Morgan trying to basically uh, shoot his wife and put her out of her misery and kill his wife as a walker. And this shot has that exact same kind of cinematography. So that's pretty cool. But it's going to be interesting to see what Morgan is shooting at here. Is he going to shoot at some saviors or what? It's going to be interesting to see what that's all about. But what's certain is that Morgan is definitely back in the next episode. We have Dwight pointing the gun at Eugene here. That's very interesting. We know it's Dwight because of the watch. I'm pretty sure that's Dwight's watch. And that's obviously Eugene. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there because it seems like Maybe Eugene is not going to shut his mouth. It's not going to say nothing. And maybe Dwight is forced into having to put Eugene down in order to protect himself. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. It's not worth us. We have Michonne saying, what we're about to do is not worth the risk to us. So it seems like the mission that they have in mind is risky. And definitely it seems like Michonne is not willing to take that risk. But we have... Daryl basically saying he is willing to take that risk. So he says it is for me. So it is the risk for Daryl. So it's going to be interesting to see what their mission is. Is it so risky that even Michonne, who is willing to take some amount of risk, is not willing to take this risk? So it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to do and what the next episode is going to look like. From the looks of it, it seems like it's going to be an interesting episode. And it seems like it's going to be intense, maybe a bit more exciting and interesting than the last episode. But it's going to be interesting to see what they do. But that's it for this video. See you next time for another super video.